That terrific song is called Bloodhound, and it was written and performed by my special guest today, Vanessa Collier. Vanessa, thank you so much for joining me today on the Friday Afternoon Music Mix. It's an absolute pleasure to have you here. It's my pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. I received your latest CD, which is fantastic, called Heart on the Line. And I told your radio promoter, Rick Lusher, that this was probably one of the best CDs that I have received in 2020. I was that impressed with it. And I told him, I've got to have her on my show. <laughs> and so <laughs> I'm thrilled that you were uh, able to join us uh, today. And I wanted to um, talk a little bit about this new album. But first, I wanted you to tell me a little bit about your background. I mean, it, I went through your website. Um, then I went to, of course, the, the greatest source of information, Wikipedia. <laughs> 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 kind of like the People magazine of um, of information, and <laughs> and uh, I mean Vanessa, you have just I, I I would be the whole interview just talking about where you've been, what you've done, but um, the most impressive thing that jumped out was you, that you were a, a, a double uh, graduate of the Berkeley School of, of of Music in Boston. Yeah, yeah, it was a good uh, good four years for me because um, I I'm very introverted and. Um, I was very introverted throughout my college years and kind of like got all these great opportunities um, to just kind of expand my horizons. And, and uh, so, so I did a music technology degree, music production and engineering, um, as well as performance. And um, it was just, it was wonderful, wonderful four years of, of learning about songwriting and um, all sorts of things, you know. Not to mention how many people at their commencement, <laughs> <laughs> Kathy Matea, yeah. Annie Lennox, and Willie Nelson, you jammed on stage at your commencement. I mean, yeah. who does that? <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, it was really, the Kathy Matea was actually even before that, it was like a full week long session, which was even better um, of like oh, rehearsing wow. and, and putting on this show. And then, yeah, I, I couldn't believe when they announced the, the honorary graduates, they were, uh, you know, Willie Nelson, Annie Lennox and Carol King. And I was just like, <gasps> mind blown, you know, um, it's like, could not get any better. I don't know that any class will ever have as great of a, a year as I had. So, and then they brought along Chris Christopherson too. So it was just like, what? This Incredible. Is insane. <laughs> I mean, that, I, I thought that maybe that bring you out of that little inverted shell. <laughs> yeah, I, I know. Right. It's, um, I've always kind of hidden behind the horn. Uh, and then sort of what has kind of brought me out is, is, more singing, more being the front person. You, you can't be shy, you know? Um, no. so it's been really cool. I'm, I'm not shy with people that I really know well, but with most people I am. Right. So it's kind of <laughs> like, all right, well now you just have to make, you know, however many 5,000 people feel like family, <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. Um, so it's just allowed me to be a little bit more comfortable, thankfully. And you've um, you've really gone a, a long way with some awards too. The 2020 BMA Horn Player, as well as 2019 BMA Horn Player of the Year. So, and, and many, many more beyond that. Seven times Blues Music Award nominee. You've had a a, a great run. Yeah, <laughs> I, I really have. I um, you know, the last two years, I I have just been honored to be nominated, and so surprised when when my name has been called. You know. Um, I'm up against some some great people. Jimmy Carpenter is one of my favorite guys on the scene. Um, I like Jimmy Carpenter. Yes, super kind, such a great dude, and then just a phenomenal horn player. Yes. And then, you know, I have uh, – this year was against Trombone Shorty, so I was, like, sitting there just totally relaxed, not expecting anything. And then, of course, it's like, boom. <laughs> you know, That's say my name and my mom and I were just like, oh, my gosh, this is so cool. <laughs> I mean, I mean, you and you know, you're very young, and and you've you've worked very hard, and and come a long way. It's it's just amazing to me. And then I didn't realize that you had started your career with Joe Lewis Walker, who is one of my absolute favorites. I and did, yeah. I got really lucky. Um, 
the summer before my senior year that he uh, was rolling through Philadelphia and yeah. my friend was playing drums for him. And he was like, oh, you should come and meet Joe. Joe loves to bring people up, you know, especially when they're the younger generation. He's trying to foster the blues. And so I listened to his records like for the first like an hour before I had to leave. And I was like, oh, my gosh, this is totally up my alley. Um, and I'm playing along and whatever. I'm like ready to go. So I go down and, you know, thankfully he I met him on the break and he was like, oh, OK, did you bring your horn? And I was like, oh, yeah, of course I brought my horn. You know, um, he's like, all right, so we'll bring you up. We'll bring you up. And he goes around and, you know, finishes his break and all that kind of stuff. And as he's walking back um, from his break back to get up on stage, he's like, you coming? <laughs> and I was like, uh, sure, sure. Yeah, absolutely. I'm coming. Grab my horn. And, you know, I go up there and he has me up for like a song or two. And I'm like, all right, well, you know, general etiquette is you play a song and you like go to get off stage. You know, you're not trying to take up everybody's time. Right. And he goes, where are you going? Stay up here. <laughs> and I ended up staying up for the whole second set. And it was oh, like incredible. phenomenal, you know. And then afterwards he was like, hey, you want to go on the road? So I was like, totally. Absolutely. That's great. And it turned into a year and a half, you know. Too drunk to drive drunk, huh? Oh, I love that song. <laughs> that song, oh, great. I played I that at, at, at the beginning of my set uh, in the first hour after your song because I, I thought that would be a good uh, fitting for you. <laughs> Absolutely. Great. I yeah. love that. I've also got to ask you a little bit about some of your bandmates. Um, yeah. To say they're masterful would be a gross understatement. Oh, and um, I've watched um, some of the people that play with you on um, your website and on YouTube. Um, do you have a, a regular group of people that are your bandmates? Or do you, um, you know, mix them up to bring in some people that you like and, and with different skill sets? Yeah, so it, it kind of depends the position. Um, the drummer has been the same for the past five years. I actually went to high school with him. Oh my um, so that's been really cool. I, I played my very first gigs with him. And then, you know, the last five years has been he's been on the set for everything. Um, I've gone through, I've got a great bass player now out of Nashville. His name is CC Ellis. Um, and on this record, he, he plays the majority, but I also have Scott Sutherland cause I, I love that. I love that guy's playing so much. Um, and then also Cornell Williams is also playing on the record who's plays with John Cleary. And I was just trying to get that NOLA bass sound, you know, um, <laughs> <laughs> New Orleans, that's great. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but you know, I, I, I love Laura Chavez. She's like one of my favorite guitar players, but I have a couple more that, that switch out. So I'm, I'm doing these dates with Arthur Nielsen, who's Shamika Copeland's guitar player. Um, oh, really? Okay. For like 20 year, 21 years now. Mm -hmm. Um, as well as Chris Vitarello, who's big on the scene. Um, I, I mean, it just kind of depends. Um, guitar seems to be the hardest one to fill because I do vary my styles so, so much. So the guitar person has to be able to switch in between, you know, the funk stuff, the blues stuff, you know, a little bit soul. of rock. Everything. Exactly. Yeah. A little bit of yeah. soul. It's like yeah. totally you got to wear many hats. <laughs> you do. And and you, you do them well. And Thank speaking you. of which, until I went on to your um, website. I did not know that you also, in addition to reed instruments, play uh, string instruments as well. <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. A little yeah. Bit. You were playing a, um, looked to me like a, a national guitar on, um, on uh, one of the, uh, YouTube videos that I watched. Um, mm -hmm. um, and, and you were finger picking too, to top it all off, which <laughs> I'm always impressed by a great finger picker, which then led me to who is that guy that is the, guitar player and harmonica player that was on with you uh at the Neshobia Valley Blues Festival in 2015 I have I mean Vanessa I've interviewed some incredible finger pickers yeah J James McMurtry Otmar Liebart yeah um Eric Johnson mm -hmm. um I had the interviews with all of them and sat right in front of them while they were doing it but I have never seen anybody uh pick I, his fingers look like they're about twice the length of mine. And he, <laughs> he, he, I, he looks like he's combing the guitar is what yeah. he looks like. Yeah. And he's just so composed and all over that guitar. And then in the next song, he joins you with harmonica. Who is that? Yeah. So that was my friend from college, no way. Um, and he played with me, I don't know, maybe a year, the first year we were out. And then, um, you know, it, it's difficult for certain people. The road is not built for 
everybody. Yes. Um, so he, I, I think, I think that probably was one of the last dates, most likely that we we were able to play together. But he's he's always he's always been a fantastic guitar player and harmonica player. Um, uh, I, I enjoyed enjoyed that time for sure. Yeah, you could tell that you and he were very close and very much in sync with the way you were playing together. And uh, I thought I heard you, you, I wrote down knowing. I thought maybe that's what you yep. called him. Yeah. yeah he's incredible. <laughs> um, also, the other thing I want to point out that uh, that you do is that you uh, give back. And one of the ways that you do that is the um, Blues in the School program. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Sure, yeah. So um, I got asked to do this you know, I'm, I'm a, I'm a public speaker in a way. Um, they got asked to do these things, uh, for, for, it was like middle school age. So sixth through eighth grade, um, and, and a couple high school students as well, and just come in and present and talk about, um, the first one they wanted me to just talk about following your passion, um, which, you know, is right up my alley. Cause, cause I very, uh, I think if I had not found passionate musicians and passionate teachers and passionate saxophone players when I was starting, I probably wouldn't love the instrument as much as I do. And I think it's really important for anybody to find, to see um, see someone, hear someone talk about loving what they do, um, because you know there's too many too many options to go and pick a job that you don't love, and then you spend most of your life like waiting for the weekend, you know. Yep. Um, so I, I, I am, that's part of what I do with blues in the schools is to teach the history of the blues and how it connects to today and how that is, you know, it was talking about uh, very passionate subjects and how we can, we can apply that, um, same reasoning to today and just trying to bring kids up, up to speed on like, Hey, you know, those rock guys that you love. They all started listening to <laughs> to the blues guys. You know, this right. is the roots of all the music that you that you listen to. Justin Timberlake, yeah, he's got oh, some yeah. Memphis and blues in him too. You know, mm -hmm. so that's that's mainly what I do. It can vary based on you know age. It can be very small. I taught some elementary school kids, and it goes all the way through high school and community college. You know, so it's really really cool. These kids must love you. <laughs> They'd, well, have so. <laughs> They'd have to. They'd have to. Yeah. And that, you know, you, you hit the nail on the head about following your passion. Mm -hmm. I, I think I don't care what what your goal is, what you're uh, what you're looking at in life. You follow your passion. Everything else will come together after that. Thank you for saying that. I oh, really yeah, appreciate absolutely. That. I believe it. <laughs> uh, it's obvious. And you've obviously moved past that. Um, introvert stage on some of those videos you uh you do command performances by the way um you have a wonderful voice just incredible voice that's made for some of these songs that you um one of them that really jumped out at me that i loved your voice on was i can't stand the rain oh that, yeah isn't that's, that a, that's just a wonderful song and you you make it yours which Thank i you. i really uh enjoyed that um there's just so many good songs that you've got. Um, and let's talk once more about your new album called Heart on the Line uh, that just came out. And I assume it's available on all the available <laughs> places, oh, <yeah. laughs> Amazon, uh, <laughs> iTunes, uh, the local record store, if it's still open. <laughs> yes, exactly. Everywhere and through my website as well. I actually have it for anybody who wants to just listen to it and they don't happen to have Spotify. It's actually up um, to listen for free on my website as well, because I mainly just want people to hear the music, you know, at Vanessa Collier.com. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> I did notice also that um, you wrote every song on this CD with the exception of two. Three. Yes. Oh, there are three? Okay. Yes. Three covers. But yes, eight, eight of them I wrote. That's incredible. <laughs> and every single one is a winner, Vanessa. I oh, mean, thank just, you so much. Yeah. They're just, and, and your arrangements, your production, obviously, that's where you've gained um, uh, such skill is that the way you bring the production of this music together, this is great. Thank I mean, you. It's just, it's just terrific. It's, it's very seldom that you see somebody three or four CDs into their career that has such good production on it as this has. I'm, I'm, oh, thank just, you. I just love this album. I really do. I, and I saw that, um, I spent a lot of time in the DC area and I saw that your, um, heart on the line release party was at the Birchmere. 
Yeah. <laughs> yes. That, I first started going there nearly 50 years ago. And yeah. um, at that time, it was the bluegrass place in the United States to hear right. quality bluegrass music. It's since, you know, had to modify and do yes. some things. But that's a fantastic place to listen to music. <laughs> yeah. Really, you know, quite, the, quite the stage and quite the history that's there from the seldom seen to to you. <laughs> that's yeah, great. Thank you. That's yeah. Good. It was an uh, honor for sure. Oh, that's terrific. My special guest today, Vanessa Collier, uh, saxophone player, incredible vocalist, singer songwriter with her new CD called Heart on the Line. Get your hands on it. <laughs> it's fantastic. <laughs> it's um, It's been an absolute pleasure to talk with you today, Vanessa. And um, I hope that one of these days when COVID is behind us, that if you're in Northwest Washington and you're touring again, would you please come by the studio and play, some, play some songs live for us? And yeah. Sing yeah, I let's know, make it happen. <laughs> I, I would I would dearly love that. That would be great. <laughs> and I think what I'll do is, uh, with your permission, I'd like to go out with this wonderful song that you wrote for the title of your new album called Heart on the Line. And come back and see us again, would you please? And the best of luck to you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thanks for having me on.